did you know that if you select Curve in Edit Mode and press Ctrl plus T, you can easily twist it to create a spiral shape? Want to see more Curve tricks? Check out the related video below. If you're still adjusting lights one by one like this, stop right now. Instead, use this quick trick. Select your lights, press Shift plus T, and click to aim them at a single point. Easy and fast. If need more control, use the Track 2 constraint. Select a light, open the Constraints tab, and add Track 2. Set a target object. Then select all lights, go to the Object menu, and choose Constraints. Copy Constraints to selected objects. Now all lights will stay aimed at the target, even if it moves. Lighting made easy. Follow for more Blender tips. This is how you can generate such smudges in Blender. With this one free add-on, you can tip the creator or get the file for free. Open it up and explore the flexible node setup. Control mask size and intensity with precise sliders. Then play around with color and layering for perfect results. Also, you can group the nodes and drop them into any material. Now you have instant grungy and weathered textures. Enjoy! Let me show you a quick and efficient way to create a highly detailed ground texture in Blender without overloading your scene. I'm gonna be using this texture from Poly Heaven. All right, I started with a plane, subdivided it heavily, and yeah, I know it looks dense, but relax, it's gonna be way lighter by the end. Then I added a displace modifier with a custom texture, lowered the contrast to around 0.1 to keep things natural, and shaded it smooth. After that, I applied my textures and brought the bump down to 0.1, just enough for subtle detail. At this stage, the mesh looked great, but it was sitting at over 60,000 vertices. So, I applied the displacement and used a decimate modifier, brought it down to 0.2 which kept most of the detail but cut the poly count big time. Then shaded it smooth again, added a smooth modifier and that's it. Now you've got a clean, realistic ground texture that looks high res but runs light. You can grab this blend file for free from my Patreon. The links in the comments. And why How to fix your UVs on circular geometry. Super easy. Pick a face on the face loop. In the UV panel, go to UV and click on Reset, and scale the UV back to normal. Now shift alt the face loop, and shift double left click the face you've just reset. Now hit U and choose Follow Active Quad, and boom, there you go. Repeat that for the other edge loops, and we're done. Sheesh! Here's a most efficient and easy way to make cinematic art. First, grab a cool reference image that'll be your base. Then, start modeling the main part of it. Keep it simple at first. Once that's done, start adding details to make everything look more realistic. After that unwrap UV and add your image, then use Photoshop or any AI tool and fix the main texture of the image. After fixing the textures this is how it looked like, pretty clean, right? After that, drop in some extra assets around your model to build up the full scene. Play around with the lighting and mood, and boom! You've got yourself a cinematic shot. If you're into these kinds of projects and want to explore more, check out my Patreon. I've shared a bunch of cool scenes and creative projects there that you might really enjoy. So check the link in the comment. How to create this tire print effect in Blender. Add plane and subdivide it. More subdivision creates more realistic results. Now import a tire 3D model and animate it using empty object. Keep in mind that tire must be intersecting the plane. Select plane and select dynamic paint in physics tab. Add canvas and set the values as shown. Select Tire and select Dynamic Paint again in Physics tab, but now select Brush. Play the animation to see the result. Shade smooth the mesh to make it smoother. Now we will add some more subdivisions to add some extra details. Press Play, you can see the tire looks more accurate than before. Now add some other tires. Now add textures on the plane. Also add displacement texture to make it more detailed. Now add textures on the tire also. Render it. So there is an easy way how to transfer data from modifiers and materials from one object to another. You simply select all objects that you want the data to be transferred to. Then with control click, you select the object with the data that you want to transfer. Now press control L and you will see different data types that you want to transfer from the active object. Follow me and if you want to check out my procedural material library, comment back and I will send it to you. It turns out it's pretty simple to create realistic cables in Blender by applying a cloth simulation to a mesh line and using geometry nodes to turn that into more cable-like meshes. 
The beauty of this combo is that you can hook the ends of the mesh line to different objects for real-time simulation, which makes animating a lot easier. And with a few geometry nodes, quickly customize the look of the model and materials. I've used a version of this technique to create a cable generator, which I've shared on the Discord server for anyone to use, examine, and improve on. This is how you can generate such industrial structures in Blender. With this one free add-on, you can tip the creator or get the file for free. Now just open the file. With a flexible node setup, you can extrude the faces and build the desired shape without any restrictions. Then unwrap the mesh with cube projection to fix the texture stretching. Additionally, explore a range of options for more control. You can set the cross-beam density, lights, and pipe radius for custom effects. Enjoy! How to create this landscape in Blender. Add plane and subdivide it. Now add some displacement to plane by using displacement modifier and cloud texture. Import the foliage assets in your scene. Watch till end to get the free foliage assets. Add every assets in different different collections. Now add particle system on the plane and follow the instructions as shown. Add different different particle system for every asset. Add your subject in the scene, add a HDRI for lighting, and also add glare in compositing tab. How do you model this? Rotate we'll this cylinder 90 degrees and scale down the other one but exclude the z-axis by pressing shift C. Add edge loops and snap them to the vertices of the second cylinder by holding control. And do the same thing with the second one. Select both and press Ctrl J to join them together. And then select these faces and press Ctrl E bridge edge loops. Add supporting edge here and two edge loops in between. Adding supporting edge here as well. Select these two faces, do inset, bridge edge loops and evenly distribute the edges. Do the same thing to the other side and add the subdivision surface. Now you tell me. Today's video is brought to you by BlenderKit, the ultimate tool to take your 3D creations to the next level. Whether you're a professional artist or just getting started, BlenderKit provides you access to over 71,000 high quality 3D assets, including models, materials, shapes, brushes, and even full scenes. The best part, over 53% of the library is completely free, with everything licensed for both commercial and non-commercial use, meaning you can use them in your own projects and monetized work. For those who want to elevate their workflow even more, the full plan gives you unlimited access to the premium library while also helping support open source projects like Blender itself. Join the thriving BlenderKit community today. Check out the link in the description and start creating stunning 3D artworks with ease.